is a Cosmic Octave original podcast. Me and Jake running down the street with a handful of comic books kicking ass and yeah. banging chicks and drinking beer. No, not and me. I'm, not weed. me. I'm oh, married. Yeah, well, I'm married. Jake. Yeah, do that. Yeah. I'll pay a lot of with Jake and Tyler. What up, what up, what up? It's your boy. <laughs> hey, how's it going? I'm Jake. I'm Tyler. This is the show. You heard the intro. And uh, <laughs> it's my birthday. That's cool. I am 31 You today. are really, really flowing today. Yeah. I felt like that was a really solid intro. I felt pretty good about it. Honestly. Interesting, because I'm the one who's been doing like the rap stuff. Yeah. And you're the one who's just killing it right now on the mic. Uh, episode 173. You're killing it on the mic, bro. Yeah. 173. You and me together. 173. Oh, saying. What, what, what time are we at? We haven't sworn a minute yet. four. We haven't sworn That's yet. That's pretty impressive. I don't think. Have we? No, we haven't. No. Okay, good. Brilliant. Right. Um, nice. Let's try to keep that going. Yeah. <laughs> we got a lot to talk about. We took we a week. We sing too much. All right. We took a week off. Um, I went to uh, Minnesota and I got to see Bruce Dickinson uh, on stage fight a giant Eddie Iron Maiden with a fucking laser. Shit. <laughs> One twenty nine <laughs> with a fucking laser cannon. It was cool. Yeah. It was um, cool. Yeah. Was really so cool. you had that trip, and then was um, I was just doing. You know, my birthday is while well, we're recording this. So I was doing some birthday stuff. Kind of like you, it, it, it's almost like you went on vacay right after I got back. You know what I mean? So like we, yeah, because I, I had taken some time off some about from ten work. days. Yeah, about so. ten days total of us just not seeing each other. Well, it was just one of those things where I had Sad. I had plenty. I had time off that I could take. You know, I had plenty of PTO at my job, so there was like, PTO, you know what, PTO? What's that? <laughs> what's that? Uh, so I was um, like, you know what? I'm gonna just take some extra days off around my birthday. So yeah, it was like it was almost like we overlapped a, in in vacations a little bit, but uh, so that's why we're a little bit behind. Uh, but we're gonna catch up. This You're week. behind. Well, well, we're gonna catch up, and we have new things to talk about because I on Friday saw Venom: The Last Dance. Yeah, so he's gonna basically get two long boxes this week. Oh my god. And also, I have something I want to—a comic book I want to talk about. And we're reviewing a comic book this week, and of course, talking about Penguin and Agatha. But first, now we have to do a stupid segment that is ridiculous. <laughs> I was in—I uh, don't know if anybody has been to the Mall of America, but it's really fucking cool. It's just really cool. There's just—you don't really have to spend money to just walk around and look at stuff, and it's so much to look at. And, I went there a couple years ago. Well, I, I I went down. I got my jersey traded in. I went to the Lego store, of course, the obligatory Lego store. I got to go. And then I took all my stuff back to. I was going to go on one of the rides in the middle because they do have some rides for you know adults. And I was going to go. I, I parked like I was literally like um. You come into the entrance and walk downstairs and take a left and like that's the middle of the mall. So I, yeah. I parked really close. So I'm like, I'm going to take my stuff back to the car and then I'm going to come back. And I couldn't find one that I liked. So instead, I went all the way up to the top, the very top of the Mall of America, which is where the food court is. Um, or I think it's maybe the fourth or the third. But I went all the way and I was walking around trying to find, you know, I have nothing to do looking at all the different, you know, they got the regular shit like Burger King and whatnot, but they also got some funky stuff, you know, and I'm like, I don't know what I'm going to eat yet, you know? And then I see this thing, it's called the Abisu Life Store. And it's just full of authentic Japanese stuff. Just stuff. They have these huge statues of like anime characters in the windows. I took my picture with a couple of them. It's it's fucking insane, right? And just all these random like toys. And I'm looking at it and 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 I'm looking at the this wall and I'm trying to figure out what I'm looking at. And I, and for all I know it's all snacks, right? Like snacks and whatever else. I don't realize that this is like not only do they have like toys and stuff, but they also have like cleaning supplies and things, right? mm mm-hmm. Mhm. And like groceries, like regular stuff, right? Like a, a drugstore even. So I'm looking at this wall and I, I'm trying to figure it out and I can't really see any sort of symbol on these packages that tells me like what the flavor might be. <laughs> now I know you're like, oh, okay. Was it like a chip? I have no idea what it was. And so I finally read the uh, the shelf, which was in English, to see what I was looking at. Because again, I thought I was looking at a wall full of like chips or cookies or something in packages. Yeah. Tampons. <laughs> 
Yeah. Interesting. Again, again, there was nothing that said to me that they were, you know, other than the fact that I had seen that that around that same area, like a, a couple of aisles away, there was snacks. You know, there was like you know whatever, and it was just God. I'm so dumb. Like what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just just dumb, right? So then I turn around and there's this whole aisle of chips, which leads us to oh chips. <laughs> Sorry. We'll do one this week and one next week. You said hey. Everybody knows what I'm talking about. Hey. Hey. Oh, hey. 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 What's in my mouth? Everybody knows what I'm talking about. I said hey. Oh, there we go. Uh, so I got a couple uh, different things. I got two things. Um, it's a couple toys, but I also got uh, Lay's Yam Crisps, and it's cucumber flavor. And then the other one is one that, because it's your birthday, we won't do that one today. But we're oh. going to have to. Is it squid? I hate. I don't like seafood. I'm not a big seafood guy. I See, I didn't know that. If I would have known that, I would have gotten something like they. For, I mean, for, I'll try it. For but. some reason, there were like a lot of different brands that had the same flavor, Mex, uh, Mexican chicken tomato. I don't know what that means, <laughs> but that was no. I'm serious. Like I they don't had, either. They yeah. had Lay's, and then they had like they had all sorts of different types yeah. of chips. I just bought the Lay's because it's honestly like. Hey, I know what I'm probably getting, right? You know, yeah. As far as Lay's quality, right? I don't know about the other types of chips. I don't know. So I got the... Uh, we're going to do the cucumber crisp. I didn't know that you didn't like seafood. I would have gotten something like... They did have a grapefruit flavored chip. Okay. It was on the, the shelf set. I don't was, really like grapefruit either. Well, I don't either. That's not the point of this. The point of the this... The point of this is to make each other suffer. Yeah. No, the point of this First is... First of all, you're going to pour those chips into the venom. Popcorn bucket. <laughs> right now. <laughs> you imagine? No, we're not. They look small. I didn't think they would be that small. I thought they'd be more like chips. All right. Interesting. Yeah, I don't... So these are uh, Lay's Yam Crisps, and yeah. they are manufactured, I believe, in Japan. Oh, God! Oh! <laughs> wow. <laughs> Uh, I mean, that's a big stream. Uh, uh, what well, is that? Uh, uh, <laughs> I don't want to eat anymore. <laughs> what, you don't like cucumbers? Uh, you really don't like cucumbers? I thought it was like... That's what it tastes like. It just I tastes know, like cucumbers. You don't just eat a cucumber. You put some salt in no, it. No, man. I eat, oh, I eat cucumbers straight up. I'm a cucumber guy. Uh, you know, I, hey, 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 you know what? I'll eat your ass. I'm not, I'm not bad. I'm enjoying them. I fucking hate them. I, this is a problem. I got these so that we would have something that we would like, kind of like, and I hate them. I can't fucking imagine what those goddamn things are. Are you really like. that upset about some cucumber chips? My man? I don't like them. They're tasteless and wooden and gross. So I'm going to say, Ew, fuck you. From Tyler. <laughs> Is that right? Is that accurate? <laughs> uh, I'm just saying. Uh, I thought it would be like a salty snack. It's not yeah, salty just, at sorry, all. Sorry, I was just I was trying to like because it, it's <laughs> bland and then it tastes like a fat cucumber in your mouth. Hey now, sorry. Usually you got to pay for that. <laughs> <laughs> I did. It was like five bucks for this bag. Having sex with him. <laughs> That's an oldie, but a goodie. Jesus, lordy. So, yeah, I'm, I'm shocked. I truly am. I, I think it's pretty tasty. But I like, I like cucumbers. It's bland, though. Hey, man, there's no savory. Saltiness. Let me tell you something. When it comes to my greens, when I'm talking like vegetables and stuff like that, I am a plain Jane kind of guy. You know. I like just a sliced up cucumber. That's it. I like I, just, I like some carrots. I, I just you know I don't, what I mean. I don't, I don't like, need any flash with it. I don't like the yam. The I don't like that the yam. The I don't yam, really taste the yam. 
Yeah, Whatever, man, dude. It's wooden and tasteless, and I, wow. I want it. I want it gone from the face of the earth. You hear what he's saying, America? I hate it. You hear what he's saying about cucumbers? Ugh. I love cucumbers, but this not is a pro as cucumber a flavor, podcast, my man. Not as a flavor of chip. All right. If you're going to give me on. a cucumber flavor, you give me like tzatziki or something, which is made from cucumbers, or a salty cucumber. You don't give me just a straight up cucumber cut from the cucumber, and here's a here's a fucking Here's a disc full of cucumber. Hey, can I get some salt? No. You just eat it. You eat all that wooden, fibrous material and just, yeah. No ranch or nothing. Can you tell them American? So, Penguin, episode five. Uh, I don't. I'm mad. You need to let it go. You'd be like, you just, you just need to be like Elsa, dude. Let it go. You uh, shut up. Where's that? Thing? Okay. Like that popular picture, motion picture, Frozen. Uh, I still have never seen it. I don't think you would, ever would. But uh, <laughs> I don't really have a reason. To. Why would I don't you? have kids. Exactly. Yeah. Why would you? Um, yeah. So Penguin episode five is a crazy episode. I I think episode f- like the show continues to ramp up its stakes and ramp up just what it is. Um, in, in terms of like what's it's building towards and eventually what we're going to see in the finale and in what's going to probably play out into Batman part, the Batman part two. Uh, uh, can I say something real quick? Yeah, sure. A couple weeks ago, I made a uh, rather bold prediction uh, about what's her name becoming the penguin because of some different uh, couple of theories I had, whatever. Yeah. Um, on the uh, page, the Max page, it says the rise, uh, the rise of Oswald Cobb into the pit. Yeah. So my theory, I don't think holds much water anymore. Yeah. But uh, pretty insane how everything has turned out. Yeah. For him, and and I gotta say that fucking scene was brutal. Uh, well, I watched it in Minnesota. Uh, the first night that I was in my hotel, I logged into my Max on the little TV there and there. And, uh, just, you know, I know we're going to jump around, whatever. Um, but you just, you look at like the things it's, it's, No, I'm just, I'm saying, like, it was just really fucking brutal. And then, of course, like, his whole plan, uh, if they fu- tried to fuck him over, ends up fucking himself over. Because then the mushrooms are dead. But yeah. then, but then it seems like by the end he's got his lair. Oh, I, so I like how this, this builds in, in, in now that the, 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 the storytelling that we're going forward of, the dual storyline of Sophia building a, her crime family, and then what are they called again? The Gigantes, uh, and then having uh, Oz build up his drug empire, and how they're going to be clashing. And well, the Maronis are going to join. The Maronis uh, are gone. Or no, sorry, the Falcons are gone. The Maronis are extremely depleted. Right, but she's. Didn't she try and link up with Sal Maroni? No, yeah, she does. We're you keep jump. We're, we're jumping all over the place. So. We, I want to talk about a few things. I want to talk about her relationship with VD Johnny. Uh, that whole thing of where she, where she held him, and then this whole thing of torture, mm. and the, the like this uh, pouring ice cold water on him, stripping him down into the. the keep in mind, this is in November, where this is taking place, so it's cold. Yeah. Down there, especially when you're stripped down to your underwear and you're covered in ice cold water. I'm already cold. Yeah, I'm already cold in my basement right now doing this podcast. And I got a fucking hoodie on. And um, and that whole sequence is so. It just like you were talking about. It is so brutal. There's so many brutal sequences in the show, and when she, she finally gets the answer she wants on the money, and then says, you know, okay, I'm gonna. You know, I'm not necessarily letting you go, but you're going to work for me now, mm-hmm. pretty much. And uh, and then, yeah, that sequence of that whole scene, again, 
just the performance of of her Sophia Falcone and then Sophia Gigante in this scene where she says, "Look, I gassed all of them. I fucking killed them." Okay? And they were shitty to you, too. You should not have any fucking loyalty to them. And I am a gigante. And this is the gigante family. I'm going to give you this money as a sign of, like, we're all going to get paid. You're going to get a cut of this. And she shows an example of we're not doing this anymore when Vidi tries to say anything. Yeah. Blows his fucking head off. I fucking saw that coming. I was like, oh. I saw that coming just because I was like, I can't believe that she's going to torture him and then keep him alive i, I can't believe that she's going to allow him to like survive this all this shit you know yeah. what i mean like i know she needed him to bring everybody together but like to get the meeting yeah as soon as they started that meeting i'm like at some point she's just going to pull out a gun and blow him away yeah. like i just as a show as a sh- of like i am in control a i don't want him around anyway and b this is not fucking you know we're yeah. not playing you know, kids games. Which again shows you more and more how tragic it is that Sophia just becomes this killer and becomes this villain because she didn't deserve this. And she, she became the killer they wanted her to be. And like, it's, she is becoming such a compelling villain. Yeah. In this, what they're doing with this Batman universe. And I would not have thought I would care this much about her Oh, a- a- and Penguin storyline and what they're doing with that. I liked, even though we're not going to get any more of it because I believe she's dead, but I really liked um, the character of Magpie that was introduced in the show when she was in Arkham. Yeah. Um, I don't know if she'll turn out to be like a villain or whatever from the... I don't know. Um, but you almost forget you're watching like the penguin and batman and dc you, you, you yeah. almost forget because you're like he's not happening in gotham yeah yeah you know what i mean yeah yeah it's it's really good because no matter what i'm seeing no matter what i'm watching i understand that like this is this is just really fucking good television with really compelling A lived characters. In world with believable characters every time yeah. i hear somebody talking about it they're like i forget that he's there and then i see him sometimes colin farrell yeah and it's like holy shit yeah yeah it's it's pretty crazy and the scene like the scene with his mom was really compelling because like so yeah they take because uh, he's trying to be like hey there's I'm a lot here. of heat on and him now like, because the Falco- now yeah. cause Sophia's mad at him the Mar- the Marconis are after him uh Maronis. I keep saying the Marconis the goddamn radio those wars. fucking radio gangsters we control the airways bitch listen violation uh Maronis. right yeah Sal Maroni Maroni Falcone uh, so the Maronis well, Gigante now Yeah <laughs> Want him dead obviously And but he kidnaps Oh my god So the opening scene Of this episode Where he gets his other like under Underlings And they assault where the sun is Oh my god no, because he has noise canceling headphones on. Yeah, 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 yeah. And they're just fucking killing dude, capping dudes in the background, and there's no sound. Oh, god. He's getting a tattoo, I think. He's yeah. getting a tattoo. He's all fucked up on drops or something. I was like, ah, oh, I love it. I love it. And then, boom, title card. Like, I, I love that. And so, yeah, he kidnaps him to pull Sal into and, and those guys out to mm-hmm. just draw them in and yeah set up a plan I'm like I'm gonna kill them both and get my, my mushrooms back and fucking brutal dude he sets them on fire sets them on fire uh, not only that he waits until she he waits he until hugs, they hug yes and then so he that light, yeah. she's covered in it too yeah god damn dude and then it's again moments like that and then with Sophia torturing a man and sh- executing him in front of other people, and Penguin do and just burning a mother and son alive, so regardless of the fact they're criminals and they did bad shit. Yeah, that's dude. still fucked up. That's fucking insane. And then you're like, oh yeah, these are bad people. These are villains. 
They remind you when you have a little bit of sympathy. You're like, oh no, these are bad motherfuckers. And there's a part of you that's yeah. like, ha, fucking fuck you. Who cares? Dude. They're all bad people. No, no. Fuck there's a part of you that's like, ha, your fucking mushrooms are are, are fucking. Yeah, and then yeah, when that gone. fucks up, it's like he keeps fucking up because he's such an idiot. Like he keeps having well, these plans and they never work. When you're when you're you know when you're killing people like that so brutally and shit. I mean, shit. You what just do you want? when you're so violent and. You just you're just gonna end up killing each other constantly because you can't trust each other. No. You can't trust killers and, no. and drug dealers, and you just can't. But yeah, the performances are out of this world. Of course, he tries to kill Sal Maroney. That doesn't work, and ends up he ends up being able to escape because of it. Um, it looks like, if I am not mistaken, and, and he, Sal Maroney Sal kills the, the the guard that the, tries to kill him. Yeah, the the dudes that are helping Peng- the underlings that are helping Penguin. Um, so yeah, then that moment was crazy when he's just like, yeah, I killed him or whatever. He's like, yeah, well, I killed your fucking wife and your son. So that's what you get your friend trying to fuck me over. And it's like, again, I'm kind of just like, yeah, fuck it. Let it all burn. Let it all burn. Let, let Sophia do this. Cause again, they're criminals. <laughs> they're not good people, sir. They're not good people. The only arguably good moral character is Victor. And so he takes Penguin's mom to where he lives. Crown Point. Crown yeah. Point that was Shit devastated cool. by the, the the water flood or the flood. And she just kind of sees where she's back and living in the shit that she was trying so hard to get out of mm-hmm. and not handling it well and being like, how can you get even fucking take care of me? Yeah. Like, you're supposed to have all this money and control all this shit. And you can't even take care of your mother. Yeah. And it's, it's really sad. But again, what did you expect, Oz? This is the life you chose. You wanted to be this fucking gangster mob boss where you sold out Sophia just to get noticed. And you did all this shit just just so you can just put your mom back where you started. Yeah. I'm willing to bet tonight's episode will be a flashback for Oz. Well, it talks about his brothers and shit. Because we don't know what happened to him. And yeah, then we end the episode with them going into the sewers and realizing we can regrow the mushrooms here because it's good for fungus. It's this damp dark environment and then yeah we build like it's a warm. Little, we stock hey, we'll cut, we'll, 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 what do you think would be good for that that's right it starts here Vic hey can you figure this out I'm sorry this is right. what happens when you I'm fuck, sorry this is what happens it. when you fuck me over Sal I'm right. sorry. Hey, what are you showing me? All right. <laughs> Sweet eye. Hey. What? <laughs> no, you keep going. Yeah. Hey. Hey. No, now we're just now we're just doing uh, mobster movie cliches. That's true. I'm walking here. That's not a mobster movie cliche. That's Dustin Hoffman, actually. For the first time in a long time, Tyler, we are going to have a comic book review what? on the show. That's right. We have, and and it's a number one, and we touched on it last week. Uh, we're talking about the DC all-in stuff that's happening. Right. Uh, that's been happening since March. And now with Absolute Batman and Absolute Wonder Woman and eventually Absolute Superman, it's going to be like, this is the big... New. Did we talk about the all in universe and what it is last week? Yes, how they're going to incorporate Elseworlds into like a shared universe, which is stupid because Elseworlds should just be its own thing and not have a there shared. There shouldn't be a universe. Why? In, That's in fact, the whole point. In fact, can I tell you one thing? The Gotham by Gaslight story, that should have its own universe. Right? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so on. Long Halloween, all so that you're shit. You're supposed to tell me, like, yeah, like Doom, the Doom that came to Gotham, the Lovecrafting thing that came out. A few years ago, like that is supposed to be tied into a connected universe. Why? It should just be its own thing. Stop. Anyway, so that being said, this is uh, uh, Scott Snyder, Nick Dragata um, on the on the art, and I will say this: as someone who just recently read all of East of West, 
and love that series. Mm-hmm. I fucking love the art of this book because it looks like I love Nick Dragata's art. So good. Um, and I love Scott Snyder's writing. It's it's almost like uh, the the moments. Okay, so we'll get to the story itself, but there are. <laughs> Two kind of uh, stories going on. There's one which kind of explains his origin a little bit when he's a kid, and yeah. then there's the rest of the story. And not, uh, a lot like the Punisher uh, that we reviewed, they're drawn in different styles. And the style that the young Bruce uh, parts are, are drawn in almost seem like, like a storybook. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then the rest is very harsh. Yeah, very, very, very uh, harsh and and spare and you know just a lot of you know. So for for some changes, for starters, the this majority of this first issue is told through the perspective of Alfred, which but is interesting. Yeah, it's not the Alfred we know. Now there has been some like add uh, additions to his origins throughout the history of, of his character that he's had some military experience and things like that. They tried this, to make a series about it. This goes its own thing and it says he's like this special ops secret agent, Alfred Pennyworth, which is not what I, which at first I was like, this is a little weird, but as it progresses, I kind of just roll with it and enjoy right, it. Right, right. So, that's the thing is like I, I first started with that and I'm like you know okay that's a little weird but then I realized well there's precedence for that it's not like they're going way off the grid here yeah and what we what we start to realize is that there's there's this group called the party animals and Alfred Pennyworth is working Which, for a strange I can I just say yeah as someone who really likes and I feel like we don't get in, I, I want to see more of black mask. I love the fact that he is the kind of the tease of one of the big bads in this story. Yeah. And I love that. And that's what the party animals are because they wear these gorilla masks. They're black gorilla masks. And yeah. even I was like, I'm sure you picked up right away, oh, this is black mask. This is Roman Sionis and uh, all that stuff. But so, yeah, yeah. so so he, he's working for some random, um, or we don't know, some sort of some mysterious. Black ops Yeah, shit. black ops. Uh, oh, we, we, you know what it probably is? It's Task Force S, uh, Task Force X, or maybe. something, maybe. Yeah. Um, maybe, or Waller. Then we go to Croc's gym, which is interesting because we see Bruce, and he's he's huge, and he, and he's having his, uh, you know, having flashbacks and everything about being in the zoo with his dad, w- who's a teacher. But Croc Master, uh, is that oh. what his name is? What? But that's a villain in the in oh, the regular Killer Croc. Yeah, Killer Croc. Sorry, um, Croc Master's from GI Joe. Yeah, yeah. But Killer Croc owns the gym, and it looks like he's friends with like the Riddler and Selena Kyle, and uh, yeah, it's like Bruce is friends with the Rogues. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, and I don't know if what what Scott is trying to set up in that, and maybe so. There's two things that I think Scott is trying to set up. He's trying to set up that, and I'm sure this is where he's probably going to go with this. Bruce is so smart. That he is friended up with these guys that he knows are, are not always like he knows they're doing some shady shit, right? And he's getting close to them so he can bring down the underbelly. Or he is a younger Bruce and he just didn't pick up on the fact that his friends are actually villains or something like that. Yeah, I don't know, but at the very least, it does set up something interesting, and the, especially the fact that Killer Croc owns a gym and that he's working out. Also. I hope they explain why he's so freaking huge. And I think they're getting to that in this first issue because it continues to set things up like a good first issue should. Like with the big fight at the end of the issue when he like screams at them and you see the black tentacles come out. Yeah. That's where I'm like, okay, so there's something with the dark side stuff with him. I'm like, okay, so he's got powers to, uh, to some extent. I don't know about that. I just, some, I just some think abilities. His, I think his his I I believe his uh, cape is is capable Parademon, of demon like shit, right? Well, no, I just think his cape is 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 uh, um, a lot more maybe even psionically controlled yeah. by him, perhaps. But there's clearly like I mean it, it's it's a con- it's a construct that he invents. But a- after we see him at the which gym, which explains, by the way, which explains. Explains that first cover, 
That explains why his cape looks like that. Maybe, maybe it yeah. is some sort of material that he got it talks from about Apocalypse. It. That like, yeah, because it's well, no, I I don't know, but where is it again that he talks about? Because he, uh, um, it talks about how he's uh, how he created the oh he. Alfred does it. That's right. Hang on. Let's go look at him. Anyway, a, I, I'd like to point end. out some of the ch- things that we'll Scott there. Snyder does with his suit and things that he does that I've never seen before, mm-hmm. which is crazy to think with Batman. Well, but the fact that he can break off the ears on his cowl into yeah, knives and cut these dudes cool. up. And then when he goes to fight the big bad in the final fight, and I don't give a shit, Tyler, this was cool as fuck, when he takes out a it handle, really cool. that's like a nightstick handle, extends out, Pops the symbol off his chest, and he has this big ass axe. That's a bat symbol. You can't tell me that shit ain't it's cool. It's not a bat symbol anymore. It is really cool. So we see. I was so so. We see the Maronis and the like Falcons, the, like that Transformers book. When I was reading that, and he did that and took out the axe, I'm like, I literally threw my fists up. Like, okay, this book's incredible. <laughs> like, what's going? I had on? read it a couple times, yeah. but um. So we see the Maronis and the Falcons are meeting with Roman, and he's got these alien creatures with him, and they end up just slaughtering him. It's pretty yeah. badass, actually. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> oh, that scene was epic, because they cut this whole time, there's music, and they cut the music, and he cuts the music, and uh, also how they're doing Black Mask in this is interesting. It's not the traditional skull-looking mask. No. It's this more like techno, like VR style like circular like there's still the skull on it but the top is like this really cool like imagine imagine mysterio's uh mask with a skull uh nose and mouth on the bottom of it yeah right okay it looks Uh, really cool i I I love his designs and they show him all these death masks and yeah like who are those creatures with them and everything um they're clearly they got the same kind of mask kind of sort of yeah his like or, his is like concubines or whatever the um, term is but uh so they they show Bruce getting ready uh as he intercut with all these stories about these party animals that are just murdering people in you know just willy-nilly on the streets yeah then we go to uh mayor gordon who's having a thing uh like a town hall and uh, there's people, you know, yelling and everything. The, and pa- the party animals assault the thing. And, yeah. And the, well, it, one woman stands up, and she's clearly like got a lot of clout and whatever. And it's like, oh, okay, she's supposed to be somebody, and we don't know who she is. But then the party animals show up, uh, and uh, that's when that's like that's what I'm talking about. Like he grabs him with his wi- with his cape. Yeah, yeah. There's yeah. several times that he does stuff so, with escape. Yeah, and at the end, when Alfred runs through his biography, we'll see what that means, because um, he talks about how when he was a kid, he invented this yeah. bridge, this bridge material or whatever. Uh, but yeah, so whatever you do, whatever you hear, do not open the store. Yeah, which they call back to later because that's what his dad says when his dad gets shot at the zoo. Some dude just shows up. Uh, apparently, his 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 dad is taking the class to, a, to the zoo, trip, yeah. right? And and this dude just shows up in the zoo, just blo- shooting. And yeah, by the way, I hope that is it. I hope there's nothing other than like it's just a, it's shooting, like it's just that random act of violence, and that that is what what pushes. Bruce to the to the levels it does, yeah. and I think that's what it's going to go to. But like that whole sequence of him showing up and just sir, and like like Alfred again. I love the fact that it's going from Alfred's point of view of describing of like it's impressive of like how he does he cuts them just right not to kill them. He just yeah. he cuts he cuts to this just the right arteries and just you know and like how. Like how good he is at this. So when the party animals show up, uh, Alfred is you know out and you know kind of checking stuff out, and he's told basically just to observe. But if the other guy, if, like, they f- if he tries to fight Alfred, he, other, he gives. Yeah, if he the g- other player jumps in, who is Batman, yeah. then he's got he's supposed to take him out or whatever. And he's like, you know, obviously I'm not going to engage do that. if necessary. You yeah. know, if he engages with you. So clearly it's bulletproof yeah because he pops down and he's got you know his uh, wing around him it's his, his uh, cape around him and it's blown away but like here where like he grabs the dude and yeah. then flings him into the fucking you know tree 
Or, oh yeah, his cape. I love that his cape is yeah. It's like it's all, it almost it. it almost looks like venom. It almost looks yeah, like symbiotes well, like popping off of it. So there's there's different parts where uh, where the hell is it again? Um, there's a part where like there's different parts in the in the book where like bats are crazy. Um, uh, where the hell is it? It's f- they, it, they talk about they show like the part where he's like bats. You know, well yeah, yeah the yeah. zoo yeah yeah hang upside down walk on their hands. Um, so yeah, he actually makes the cape move like a bat. Yeah, yeah, and and it's really really cool. So he's just kicking the shit out of these guys, and he takes care of the first guys, and uh, they're basically telling Pe- Pennyworth take him out, yeah. and he's like, he's nah, like well, I'd rather I want to see him what he, do yeah. this. Yeah, and this is when he just goes off, man. Yeah, he's slicing them up, and that's when that's that's when Alfred is when he says, "Oh, just enough not to hurt them." Yeah, and he's or just, just enough he's not to kill clearly them. Clearly, like just like, but wow, that's when man. he goes. That's a problem. This he's, guy's good. And then this is my favorite part: no fight, no fatalities at all, not one. Yeah. So an idealist, bloody hell. Yeah, like he hates that he's an idealist. And then when when uh, when. The big bag comes up yep. and says, get the fuck out of our way. Yeah. And that's when he creates an axe and just chops his hand off. Yeah. And just says, you know what? Get the fuck out of my way. Yeah. And that's when the spikes pop out of the cape. And it's just like. He tells okay. him like, hey, there's a hospital near here, motherfucker. Get going. Yeah. But the best part is. I cut it just. Yeah. If you go the, now. The best part, can... he says like, hey, well, if you're smart, you'll go ahead and. At the end of the fight, yeah, where he's running away, and he's like, "You'll take, you'll have some tactical stuff set up to." Do you yeah, know what I'm talking about. I hear that you can reattach them sometimes. There's a hospital three blocks south of here, or if, or is it east? I can't seem to remember all of a sudden. Yeah, I would run if I were but you. I'd run. <laughs> uh, let me see one second. All right, the rest of you, I'm going to give you one chance to get the fuck out of my way. Yeah, I just <sighs> want to see one. P- There's a part where he's, um, uh. Well done, but if you were a true tactician, you'd have set up a trap for those fleeing the boom. Huh. So he like he's he's basically, you know. Yeah. So that's kind of cool. And then uh then he comes up he's like that's the sound of a DC-34 automatic shotgun son. There are only 3 of them in the world. It could blow your brains all over the sidewalk before you even blink. And he just takes care of them. Yeah. He's um So 24 years old, mom is a social worker, dad is a teacher, grow up in crime alley, high friends in low places, smart, excel at school. In fifth grade, you win a standout in student engineering competition, creating a mobile, collapsible bridge that can be used to bring aid to locations hit by catastrophic damage from war and cataclysm, origami-like, based on the anatomy of a batwing. And that's like, you know, so then they show his dad getting shot, and he says, Bruce, whatever you hear, do, you do not open this door. Yeah. And that's a callback to that. Um, and then he goes and he just, he basically just becomes one review I read. Oh, oh, oh. Talks the about, genius of this is that he starts taking jobs to work inside the sewers. Right. And works in, so he understands every part of every facet of the city, inner this, piece of work of the city. This Batman, this particular iteration of Batman, might be the truest master of Gotham that we've ever fucking seen, man. Because yeah, he kept, knows the guts. Yeah. Um, you know, previous ones were like, he's rich, so he knows about all the building projects and stuff because, yeah. you know, whatever. But this one's even better because he's not on the front page ever. Yeah. This is even better, man. And he's still not a killer, movie makers. So when he gets the dro- so Alfred shows up in his hideout, gets the drop on him. Which is in to- uh, on the top of one on of the- On top. Yeah. Not on the, like in a cave. It's on top of all the buildings because he knows where to hide out. Yeah. And so he shows up, and Alfred's like, he's got the gun. He goes, give me the gun, kid. You're no killer. And then just shoots him in the fucking face. Uh, and he hits him. And then when you look at what it is, it's a buckshot full of tiny little fucking Bat- batarangs in his batarangs, face. Yeah. And he's like, you piece of... And it's funny because it's a visual. like, you fucking dick. Like, yeah. like, you didn't have to shoot me that, that close to fucking range. Right. You know? And... um. And then he goes, then he, uh, and then a few things happen very fast. First, I realize the little shit modifies my price shotgun to be non lethal, ruined it. Second, I hear that very gun chatter by my side as though he's saying, keep it, which I fucking love that. And then third, I hear this roar, the roar of my own damn bike. Because, by the way, his other bike got stolen. And he goes, I hate this fucking city. Yeah. <laughs> it gets stolen. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and then he rides off, and then it's that. 
beautiful double splash page to end it. And then there's two great double splashes. The title uh, is just a gun in yeah. a hand, and yeah, it's called zoo. Part One of Five, The Zoo. But then, yeah, yeah, this one, he's got those bat wings out, and then he's on the motorcycle in the full moon. So badass. A uh, big fucking tire. And then, uh, yeah, it ends with we get a tease of the Joker. A guy who uh, never laughs. A guy who never laughs, who is the richest man in Gotham, I mean, richest, one of the richest men in the world. And the, so we see that the Joker character is going to yeah. be basically a mirror of. Oh, I'm putting this back, man. It's a, like a third twisted print. version of Bruce, Bruce. Like Bruce Wayne. Yeah, the usual traditional Bruce Wayne, the Playboy Bruce Wayne. You could say that you know, if you believe any one of the uh, origins of the Joker, that you could say that this is merely just switching Bruce and whoever the Joker was before he became the Joker. Yeah. But I do love the fact that he becomes a city worker and just learns from the plumbing, the electrical, the buildings, and being literally being on the crews that build these buildings. So he knows how he they know the yeah. guts. Like yeah, you said, that's, the that's, guts. Well, I read I read this review and they talked about how this might this Batman might be you know better than all the others when it comes to protecting and knowing Gotham, you know because he's built it, he's helped build it in a way that previous incarnations of, of he didn't Bruce just Wayne put money into have. it he actually got his hands dirty he knows where all the yeah. uh, boxes and yeah. the power boxes are and shit and all the all right um, junctions. so let's move on now so I'm hoping oh by the way I think we both say a really really good start I, I fuck yeah. I was I'm ch- hoping I, that I can get a copy of the Wonder Woman tomorrow because <sighs> I'm a, I'm yeah. genuinely invested in at least this book yeah. maybe not the whole universe uh-huh. We'll see how, but Wonder Woman looks and sounds awesome. I liked, I liked it a lot more than I expected. I knew I was going to like it because it's a Batman book. I liked, I it love Batman way more so, than I thought I was. Yeah. I was like, this is stupid. Well, after I finished first, it, I texted you. I was like, that that was fucking awesome. When we first talked about it. We were like, this is dumb. <laughs> we even right. We yeah. were like, this is not the bat symbol. I still hate the bat symbol. It's dumb. It was still cool though. I popped it off his chest and used it as an axe. Look, I'll say this. Um, it. it one of the great things about uh, Batman and, and and all these characters, one of the great things about the characters that we all know and love so much is if you take it and you take the story and you do something with it well enough with a with a good enough writer like Scott Snyder, um, you can make an entirely different world, and it's just it's really cool. I'm hoping. I don't know. Uh, from what I understand, the Wonder Woman thing is basically a, a she's it, an Amazon without Amazons. Yeah. It's also I'd like to I would try. I, I would like to say it's what I've always, what I've always said on the show. Fatigue happens when something is done multiple times and it's not good. But when something is done right, it can you 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 tend to forget about like like I said I always say I hate prequels because there's no stakes to them yeah. but I've also said I've been completely proven wrong because the story is good enough that I'm still invested even though I know those characters are gonna make it I can still be invested and be like you know this is actually working as a story yeah. it's just as long as the story is good and like you're saying you can reinvent Batman and Spider Man and Superman and all these other characters so many times. Mm-hmm. If it's done with the right writer. Yeah. Exactly. And I am invested in this Batman because it's, it's still amazing. Like I said, with the you're seeing it even in with Matt Reeves stuff and with the Penguin and all this stuff. You're seeing like, oh, it excites me that there's still new ways to tell stories about these characters. Yes. And there's and like you said, the strand foundation is strong enough. It, that is, there's a reason that characters existed 80 plus years. You know, and uh, yeah, this I think this book is another great example of that. I, I'm just, um, you know, one of the things when when we first saw the proper uh, first preview of the of the Batman and we saw like the the new Batmobile and we saw like, you know, a lot of the cinematography the stuff that made it so great. Yeah. And you're sitting there and I remember being like, great, another Batman, you know, honestly. Right. And I saw that first preview, and I was like, oh, fuck yeah. Because here's what you need to do with Batman, okay? You got to make him fucking cool. <laughs> you do. You got to make him fucking cool. And and there are ways to tinker with the character to make him cooler than he's been before. Yeah. Somehow. And Well, yeah, he's a, he's a hero. You know, he... 
<clears throat> he is supposed to be this brutal, strong force of nature. Yeah. This blunt force of, of justice, you know? And yeah, you have to, and that's what that book does. It, the, that final fight of that first issue, he Whoops fucking their cleans their clocks, dude. And it's so satisfying to watch him just fucking tear everybody. And then to get the drop on a special forces agent twice and get the better of him twice mm-hmm. with none of that training and just be like, I'm just better at this than you think, man. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> and, and it, and then, but you know what else? And I think this is going to touch on it more. That is that little bit of level of like, this man is still crazy. Like, this man is still dressing up like a bat. Yep. Beating up people. He's still kind of crazy. You got to think about it. But uh, anyway, speaking of kind of crazy, Agatha, all along, episode six and seven? No, I thought we were on seven, right? We were caught up on Agatha. Did we do the episode where they talked about Tommy? And how he became, or Billy, and how he became Billy. Because this last one was, um, the one dealing with the time. Um, I can't, I'd have to go back, but yeah. So at this point, we know that I don't, William was this person that was going to have a bar mitzvah, um, and he was. Same, you know, seemingly had his life in front of him. He basically died, and then they get in a car accident just yeah. outside of Westview. And when he dies, he wakes up and he hears Tommy, and he wakes up and he th- he is Billy. Yeah, uh, Maximov. In effect, Wanda's- William William, Cam- William Kaplan dies, but yes. and he wakes up as Billy Cap or Billy Maximov. But he basically but he knows that, and he still lives as William Kaplan yeah, for three years. Yeah, which is fair, you know, whatever. And uh, he clearly, like, you know, he, they, they basically that episode is basically shows how he comes to be how he becomes wicked. Yeah, and what he's there for. So he's there on the road not to find Wanda. He's to there find to Tony. find his brother. Yeah, because how their explanation is when his even though he was a, a construct of Wanda. When he was dis- when he was at the end of Wandavision, when he was c- destroyed, he found an empty vessel. Mm-hmm. Meaning William just died and saw an open body and took it. So that's why he took over William and and, and it's why he's alive. Mm-hmm. So his thought is, if I did it, then he can do it, and he is at the end of the road. Not yeah. not Wanda, yeah, but yeah, his yeah, brother. So okay, cool. So that covers episode six. <laughs> Don't get me wrong; it was a great episode. I really, really liked it. Um, I love, I love it when you can take, um, you know, parts of the story and and reveal what was been, what was going on all along. Right. And it was a, Agatha all along. It, no, but it was great because I was trying to figure out like how could that happen. And it explains and why the hex and everything. Yeah, the explanation makes total sense, and I like it. So cool. We're moving on. Episode seven. Uh, the two witches come back, um, and they have to fight. They have to do a tarot reading and everything, and we find out the time is not. Yeah, Agatha and uh, Bill, Lilia and Billy can't figure out how to do the tarot. Cards. The tarot reading, and then Lilia the swords are on the Jen ceiling show dropping, dropping on yeah. them. Every time which is pretty up. interesting. Um, but yeah, so we we learn uh, that Lilia. Ha- it's basically Lilia's episode. Yeah. You could almost say that each episode has been kind of an episode for each person in the cast. And it's very much like the Watchmen episode with Dr. Manhattan. Yes. Where it's an episode told out of sequence, and it's executed so well. Mm-hmm. And I love it. I And I wish, I, I wish, I hope I have the talent one day to write that story like that, because I really want to write a story about a character like that, because mm. it's such a cool idea of a character that is literally living in well, past, present, future is, at all times. Is, the best part about this episode is that they take parts from previous episodes where she has like spells. Where you kind of notice she acts weird in other episodes and says you some weird things. And then it's like, oh, now it's connecting. Maybe think about it next. Where yeah. she's constantly trying to communicate her, with herself or throughout, something. throughout time. Right. But then and, we realize in this episode what was really going on, which yeah. is, yeah, it's pretty cool how they do that. Um, but then the big reveal to me 
is that there is a physical incarnation of death in the Marvel in the yeah. MCU. So Rio being death was obvious. I, I think in a sense of like, well, yeah, of which kind of stinks that we were never never able to do in- the Thanos thing. Mm. Yeah, I'm okay with it. Do you think they'll do something with Deadpool? No, because Deadpool hooks up with death in the comics. Well, in uh, the Marvel Strike Force game I play, there's a uh, character called Deathpool. Who's the teenage daughter of Deadpool yeah. and Death? Yeah, yeah, it's pretty common. Uh, pretty, pretty powerful uh, character, actually. Contemporary, but yeah, uh, maybe I don't know. I don't know. I I think that is interesting. That yeah, we're gonna go with Lady Death, and then she is gonna exist, and Rio is Death. I mean, it made sense because she said, "You'll get your powers, and I'll get my bodies." I was like, that kind of seemed like that was pretty right. Telegraphed coming in. Um, I, again, I just I can't. She also takes out the Salem Seven, apparently. Yeah, and how she does it by flipping the tarot card and flipping the tower, and then you know sacrificing herself, falling onto the swords, and there's that sweet moment where she's like, "You were my sister in the craft, and you know that's why I, you know, I I respect you as a sister in the craft." And you do really feel for these women, and you feel for this story of the of the of the road, and like. But it's weird because the episodes do a really good job of making, much like the Penguin, they make you really care about these characters. But then you remember they did several times go like, oh, no, someone died. Well, anyway, and even Billy called it out and said, like, you guys are just doing whatever. And they're like, that's the road. It happens. You know, we, she knew the risk. And it's like, so you're like, this was the first time when I was like, she Damn. She, well, Jen she, hasn't come back. No, but like this is the first. Was so she really Miss died. Hart? You're Miss like, Hart dang. Really died, yeah. But like this one was like, dang. I don't know. She didn't seem like she was one of the bad ones. You know, but well, well I think I think that there's. It was a really good death. It was, Look, like, it was a really good character sacrifice. I know. I know that you can take anything and and make it fit for anything else, like a. Uh, you can take a series, uh, a TV series, and make it uh, a- an allegory for the Civil War, or you can make it an allegory for you know for um, s- for for anything, right? Right. But I think, as a man, I think there are themes that I'm I'm missing. I mean, I'm, I'm probably catching more than other dudes, but um, I think that I think that there are parts and themes. You know, like when you're a kid and you watch The Simpsons, and then you grow up and you watch The Simpsons, and you're like, "Oh, yeah, there's yeah. episodes." There's things I miss, yeah. right? I don't think there's things that, about this show that I'll ever really truly get because I'm not a woman, and I'm okay with that. Yeah, because I get most of it, and I think it's really excellent that not only you know the showrunner and the people who are making the show are women, but also the main characters, except for Teen, are are women. I think it's really excellent that th- that there's this kind of forum that they have to like, hey, we can take a story about a witch and have her trying to get her powers back, and and we can put in all sorts of shit about how like it, how we have to struggle in the real world, yeah. you know, because we don't have the same rights as men and things like that, yeah. and and I think that's excellent that they've been able to tell it, and this is the first time I've even thought about there ha- there might be other messages that i'm missing you know yeah that's what a good show does is makes me makes you think about things you might not normally think about yeah um yeah it's a really good episode i'm interested in how they're gonna wrap it up because me too i believe next next episode is the last one yeah i would assume so episode eight so we have uh we have what's her name and agatha and teen left yeah interesting interesting tyler we're gonna wrap this up here. Well, we got a long box coming sure? up, so I, I'm going to. Why don't you uh, talk about venom and I'll do a long box and then we'll get out of here. No. I need a hundred dollars. Guess I'll just stop it. I hate these dang free. Phones. I thought that was a fucking sound drop. Like, did you? Take, I need a hundred dollars. Did you take a sound drop? I don't from even a know what that movie? ad was for. Yeah. No, I'm serious. Yeah, right. I need a hundred dollars. I can't pay for that pizza. <laughs> I know there's another way I can pay. <laughs> Yuck. Yeah, I know too. Yeah, I, I know. <laughs> I know a couple ways. Having sex with him. One more. Stick around. 
I was gonna say eat your ass, but oh, oh, damn, yeah. <laughs> Come on, Cohagen, you got what you want. Give, Give this people, people ass. ass. Uh, anyway. <laughs> Give these people ass. <laughs> let's talk about <laughs> let's talk about Venom, because Tyler on Friday at ten thirty in the morning. Oh my God! I went and watched Venom: The Last Dance. Where, where did you see it? Uh, at the my local Cinemark Theater, where I am holding in my hand. Was it Jordan Creek? Yeah. Nice. Uh, I'm holding in my hand a Venom popcorn bucket. It's, it's pretty effing sweet, dude. It's actually just a giant Venom head is really what it is. It, it, uh, no, he's here's... smiling at me with his big teeth yeah. and his eyes. But um, You can look online and see a picture. Now, I don't know. In real life, he's got a lid. And I got to be, and... be honest. You can. It, it's pretty well made, but you can see where the lid is. Yeah, and if you're kind of looking at it, it looks like a yamaka. So it looks like a it looks like like a Jewish Jewish venom. venom. Oy vey! Oh wow! I know. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) And you and if we talk into it like this, it'll make us sound like we're in a cave. So yeah, I went in, uh, bought that, and uh, got got myself, and I forced my wife to go because it's my birthday weekend, and she can't say no to go see this movie. So uh, yeah, nice job. No. Stop I'm it. not done caressing put it, it. Put it down. No. Uh, but yeah. The, okay. So Venom the Last Dance is, a, is an interesting movie. So I, I'll ask you this. Do you care if I tell you what happens in this movie? N- no, because here's the thing is the night uh, the night before when you told me you were going to see it, I was thinking about I didn't really have money. So I didn't, you know. Uh, but yeah, I, was, I wasn't going to make you go see this in the theater. No, no, <laughs> I was thinking about seeing if I could go with you guys. But A, it was your birthday kind of day, you know, and B, I didn't really have money. So the fact that I saw the first one. And the second, we saw the second we one. Saw we the saw the second let one there in the be theater. Carnage in theater. Right, but we saw the first one here because you wanted me to see it. Yeah, I have, I have it on Blu ray. Yeah. So I, no, go ahead and tell me if you want to do spoilers and all that. Yeah, I don't sure. mind because I mean, it's, it's spoiler. I'm time. willing to bet that there's not a lot of stuff that has. I don't know. Tell me. Tell me everything. <laughs> so anyway, spoiler alert. This is Venom: The Last Dance, and for whatever reason, this is the end to a trilogy. Can I just ask you questions? Sure. I guess. Does he die? Does Venom? Does Eddie Brock Venom die? Dies. Venom air, dies. Air quotes. Um. So anyway, because he's still alive. Shut in the up! MCU? Let me tell you the plot. So what happens is, by the way, Null is not even hard. What you have seen of him in the trailer and any clips online is what you have seen of Null in this movie. He is not the big bad. He is there to set something else up, which is so dumb. But that's what they're doing. Well, tell us. Uh, well, they're trying to make him like the Thanos of the Sony universe. But uh, so the movie opens with Null. And him sending out his uh, monsters that you saw in the trailer to try and find the Codex, which is in the comics of how he's going to... The, he's stuck on Klon, uh, Klintar, um, and he's trying to find the Codex that'll free him away from killing the, the planet yeah. so the King in Black can return. <coughs> Venom has the Codex because in the story of this... Venom was able to revive Eddie when he died, and when he did that, that created the Codex, which has created the key to get Null. And Ve- Eddie's like, well, good thing I didn't die. And he goes, well, funny story. They have a quick flashback. Technically, at the end of the first movie, Eddie did die. So now the Codex exists. So the whole big plot of this is that they are trying to get to New York, Uh so Eddie can clear his name because he's being accused of killing the guy from the the cop from the last movie. Uh, right, yeah. Who is still alive and, and he Does he turn out to be what's his name? Toxin? I don't even think so. I don't even know what he is, dude. There's so many fucking symbiotes in this movie. Um <laughs> so many. Um so <laughs> Look, I want to be very upfront about this. And I told my wife this too. Very clear. This movie's not good. This movie is shit. And I will tell you this. It 
is the most action packed, and I would say probably the most entertaining of the three. Wow. Maybe, maybe not because the first one <laughs> is pretty entertaining. But I will say, number two is pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> all three of these movies are bad. But all three of these movies are, for me, good, bad, in a sense of, like, yeah. I can see them for what they are and accept them for what they are as shit. And I never thought they would ever be anything more than shit. They're fucking Venom movies. I'm not asking for Scorsese, man. I'm not asking for Oliver Stone. So I want to make that very clear. Okay. <laughs> There's a moment when my... <laughs> what? So the whole problem, the MacGuffin of this plot is they can't fully be Venom. Most like because if they become fully Venom, these monsters that are we'll all over you will find him. They'll be like the little swirly thing, like the comic books that'll pop up and be like, "Eddie, they'll come after us and they'll see us." I will say there was a cool moment where they were on a plane. They were literally slapped onto the side of a plane, riding a plane, and the bug creature they fight on the plane, and then they fall off and they. Sp- untransform and Venom turns into like a parachute and they land and it's the thing where they have his head come out and talk but it's actually really interesting because his head is like moving around and scanning the sky to look for that monster while he's talking and I'm like okay at least they're doing some interesting things I'll almost forget the stupid margarita part at the beginning of this movie where he gets sucked back into the Sony verse and he's like margarita ID they just make a margarita like they were doing in the other movie when they're making breakfast and it's like it's like pro wrestling they're really interesting fun moments but there's a lot of moments where I'm like I can't explain why that's on the screen because why are we doing that <laughs> it happens multiple times in this movie so the big plot is like Eddie is trying to get a New York and get some help and just clear be like his name, yeah. yeah clear his name and they and, and, can't be but venom. they can't be venom right, okay. so which is know. why which is why they have a horse venom Yes. A- among other things? Yeah. Um, I can't imagine. But there, I will say this, there's a lot of action scenes, and this movie is actually surprisingly violent for a PG-13 movie. Okay. Like, the way these bugs work is they will eat a dude, but their mouth is like a grinder, so when they eat them, they sp- shoot out red mist ev- at the back of their head every time they eat people and stuff, and I'm like, that's pretty gory for a PG-13 movie. Close. Okay. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> there's a whole military team that's out to get these symbiotes. And we find out in the bowels of Area 51, not making that up, they're in Area 51 where the symbiotes are, uh, that we see like a bunch of jars of all these different color symbiotes. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I'm like, well, that's going to be something, is what I thought in my head. I'm like, they're going to pop up at the end. So all this shit happens, and there's this whole thing of like Eddie longing for a life without with a family and without Venom and what that could be. And Venom's like, I know, Eddie, that you could probably be a good dad. Blah, 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 blah. He gets picked up by this hippie family from by the same actor that plays Lizard in the Amazing Spider-Man movies, but he's not the Lizard in this. He's just a dude. I don't know why. But so anyway, they have that whole thing, and that's what he's like, Eddie, you would be a good dad. I don't know. I think so, Venom. <laughs> so then they go to the area. <laughs> that's what I... Honestly, it's probably better than most of the dialogue in this movie. So then, they get to Area Fifty One <laughs> to get to. We got to get to the big third act fight, and I will say the last thirty minutes is just all sorts of action. Some of it. So is, wait a second. He's going to New York to clear his name. And then Tyler, go- <laughs> I don't know. Don't ask me where the plot goes. <laughs> Because guess what? He just got so, Ta- like, hey, man, I didn't no, fucking no, no. write it, dude. Because as you started asking that question, I remembered. I was like, I know. I know. They kind of lose those plot lines as I'm saying it. That's just, that's not so a good. He's on his way to New York, and then all of a sudden he's on his way to Area 51, and then he's in Area 51. Right? Apparently. <laughs> I forget. I don't care. They have to- <laughs> <laughs> anyway, remember? Okay, so obviously the the cop shows up at some point, and previews he does. So what? Oh, what the SEAL he, team, like people there. I don't they, know the so cop that the he one, killed. Toxin. Yes. So what is he doing? He, his, his he's not toxin in this. They just right like, banned in that storyline. So okay. like his symbiote left him for dead. So then they fused him with a different symbiote, and the symbiote explains the whole story of Null and gives all that exposition. 
and it just says, "Hey, you." The thing is, is like, if, and they said the whole thing: if Venom dies, the Codex gets destroyed. If Eddie dies, this Codex is destroyed. If one of them die, this Codex goes away. If they're still together and they become Venom, the, the Codex will exist, right? Great. Oh shit! Okay. Makes total sense. I want to tell you this. So <laughs> we end up in Area Fifty One because it gets stopped short completely in Vegas because they end up in Vegas because that's where the hippies drop them off. And then they're like, okay, well, we'll we'll try and make some money at a casino so that we can go keep going to New York because that's still the plan. You're going the wrong fucking way. Well, they start in California. Oh! They start, well, they start in Mexico and work what? their way up because that's where they end up at the end of <laughs> Spider-Man. No way home. And so... Uh, so Jesus Christ. The more I explain this out loud, the worse this movie is. Oh, it sounds awesome. I can't believe it. It's been money on the No, keep going. So Okay. So <laughs> You're gonna love this. Mm. So they end up in Vegas. Yeah. So they uh they, they gamble and they, they lose all their money. Mm. But they do run into Mrs. Chip. I saw that in the previews. There's a big dance number, right? That is not just for the trailers that is in the movie and god damn it, Tyler. That is how the bug finds Venom to get him to the third act fight in the Area 51 is he's like, you never let me do anything I want, Eddie, and transforms into Venom and dances with Mrs. Chen for way too long. Like, this scene goes on for a minute to five minutes longer than it should. And so the bug thing shows up, and then we have a fight, and that goes to Area 51, where all the other symbiotes are, and then, oh no, the little bug thing snuck in there, so then the bug guys are there, they're fighting Area 51, and then he's like, get the symbiotes! So then they open it up, and all these symbiotes pop out, so these workers at, like, these lab workers at this, like, little site where all the other symbiotes are, um, they start merging with the symbiotes, so we have this big, huge... Multiple symbiotes fighting this bug scene, which is actually kind of fun and okay. interesting. Cool, cool. Like all these other symbiotes. I mean, are they interesting designs? And yeah, shit there's like least? a molten one. Okay, cool. There's one that like fuses with another one, and they have like two heads, and they're fighting. And then there's one. <laughs> there's there's one character. I love how every time you laugh is when I put my hand in my palm because I, I have know. to explain a stupid know. fucking okay, plot. So point. please tell me the dumbest one. There's this lab worker that has a Christmas pin on her uh, coat. They just call it Christmas. She goes, I made a point because my mom gave me this pin. It's a sentimental thing, whatever. How that gets called back is that like green and red fucking Christmas tree pin is what like fuses to the symbiote to make that the color of the symbiote. So it's like a green, red, Christmassy looking symbiote. <laughs> <laughs> wow! I try. Look, I these Venom movies. So they're fighting I tried the so bug hard. thing. So then they fight, and then the bugs. But um, they had to. Fear, at some point, Eddie and uh, uh, Venom do have to keep. They have to merge in a fight to save everybody. Blah blah blah. So then more and more bugs keep showing up because they're like, boom, the Codex is here. We're gonna all go to Earth, yeah. and they keep showing up. And Eddie's about to die. He's been gashed. And Venom comes out and says, like, Eddie, they're going to keep coming, so we got to stop this. And he heals Eddie to say, like, this is it, man. We're going to have to split. They form. Because, oh, my God. (laughs) These bugs can't see him unless they're fully transformed. So these bugs are almost blind (laughs) until that. But it doesn't make sense because they fight other people and eat other people and do shit to other people throughout the movie. I don't understand. Whatever. So all these bugs don't really see him. And then they they put out their hands like, come get us. And they transform. So when they're trying to get to Venom, they keep merging into him. And there's this big glob mass of things. And he's moving over to this like um, chemical, like acid burn thing. And there's a guy, the general that was fighting him, he's dying. He's like, here, flip the switch, activate it, burn it all. So he's going to, Venom is going to sacrifice himself, die, kill all those bugs, and that's going to lock away Null and whatever. Yeah. (laughs) So he puts his, (coughs) which so many reviews have said this movie does not earn the emotional beats it's going for at the end, and it's absolutely true. (laughs) So Venom takes his tentacle thing out and puts a metal door over Eddie to protect him from the blast and he boom, blows, explodes. 
kills all the things and he dies. He's like, I will never forget you, Eddie. Don't forget me. And this isn't a goodbye. So, you know, we'll just see you later. Blah, blah. He explodes, dies. <laughs> so then <laughs> we cut to a hospital bed. This is the ending. And a general shows up and expunges his name. And he says, like, thanks for your help stopping, you know, Noel showing up and all that. We'll expunge everything, whatever. And then, <laughs> Tyler, this is the funniest part of the movie. Eddie Brock is walking in the city to Memories by Maroon 5. Okay. And we're getting flashbacks of the all the movies, the other two movies yep. and all these yeah. movies. And somebody on a podcast said this, and I'm going to steal it because it's funny as shit. This movie gaslights you and they're trying to make it seem like, hey, you know, this Venom trilogy was a cohesive, solid trilogy. Made a lot of sense. And look how sentimental this whole thing is. And then the whole movie is they want to go to New York to clear his name. Yeah. And, and Venom wants to see the Statue of Liberty. Okay. And so the last shot of the movie. Is Eddie Brock looking at the Statue of Liberty? And he, he's going. He's like, I hope you don't. F-. Remember, he says, "I hope you don't forget me, Eddie." He's looking at the Statue of Liberty, and Eddie Brock goes, "I won't forget you, buddy." Credits. That's your movie. And he's looking out at the pe- the the Statue of Liberty. Another thing this movie does: three movies, three Venom movies, without having Spider Man. Three times they try and tease something with Spider Man. They even go to the lengths of some judge kicked me out of New York because uh, the reporting I did in New York. But I'm gonna go back because he owes me. You know this judge to clear my name. So implying that hey, he worked for the Daily Bugle. Is Spider Man gonna show up in this? Nope. Nope. We just did it for that part to do to be like hey, I didn't. So is there like an end credits thing? There's a post credit scene where Noel says, this doesn't make any sense, right? Because you think the whole point of the Codex was Venom dies, the Codex dies. They have to sacrifice. It's the last dance, right? Mm-hmm. But he says, your champion has fallen. The King of Black is coming. And he like finally shows his face to the screen and it cuts to black. Doesn't make sense. Because you just told me in the movie that the Codex was the key. So how is it getting to Earth? Is Venom still alive? And then there's another cut. There's another scene that I didn't stay in the theater for, but I read about it. Uh. Where it oh, also Junie Temple, <laughs> Juno Temple had a whole character. Where her brother got struck by lightning, and her like left arm doesn't really work because she it got like she got hit by the lightning, and the electricity transferred to her brother, kills her brother. She gets like electrical powers from her symbiote. There's a whole thing with her. I don't care. And then <laughs> there's an implication because they say we got cockroaches here and cockroaches can bomb with this symbiote and cockroaches survive anything. So I think the implication is a piece of venom landed on this little cockroach and it imply that venom really isn't dead. And that's where how we're going to have venom show up and potentially a Spider-Man movie or maybe venom Four. I don't know. But I'll tell you this much. Did you have fun? I... <laughs> At parts I did, but I will say this, I'm I'm okay with it being over. Like we don't need any more Venom movies. <laughs> Please stop. Or at least, I don't know, put Spider Man in it. <laughs> have a have Venom be in a Spider Man movie? The thing that sucks is yeah, Sony yeah. Sony has decided. Well, because M- the MCU won't let them touch it. Well, Sony has decided rather than try and play nice or whatever they've decided that all they need and truthfully that's all you need is the the white eyes and the big toothy smile and the black of venom know. yeah yeah but i got to be honest like i always see him with a big spider a white yeah, spider yeah. on his chest i, I mean that's yeah. kind of the whole thing i mean venom is really the only one that you can get away with doing that because marvel has done so much with that character, especially recently, to to kind of make his his own his own character, you can absolutely, but, and but they yeah, have but, done but, three movies. But his origin that. is yeah. tied to Spider Man. Tied, tied to Spider Man. The whole null thing goes back to like uh, didn't That's they trying to didn't they, try, all... didn't they try to say that like Peter is like the the representation of like the spider totem they're, in they're, this world or some done, stupid shit? They've done that, in and the past. that's tied to null somehow and whatever. So right. No, isn't I, it? It's more tied like because Null's it's, got no, a big to- red spider the to- thing. The, no, 
uh, it's complicated. Why the fuck are we even talk, yeah. trying to decide this crap? Because the totem thing is with Madam Web and all that. Right. Yeah. Is, isn't that where we get the edge of the spider bird? I don't fucking care. <sighs> anyway, what's your long box? My long box is Rise of the Beasts. And let me tell you, uh, I was... Transformers. Transformers, Rise of the Beasts. It's fantastic. Uh, we're I've already go, reviewed it. We're gonna go down to uh, we're gonna go down to East Orange next week and watch it. All right, that was my Jersey accent. Thank you. I don't know why we're doing. What would you think of it? I really liked it. Um, so I started watching it, and it was this morning. I I it was like nine o'clock, nine thirty, ten o'clock, and I'm like, I got two hours till football starts. I don't really want to watch like a TV show and just be bored. Uh, so I thought, let me see what's on i think i was on uh paramount i think it was on paramount i you know i have a bunch of those streaming apps and i was on um it's definitely on paramount plus something but i was on i i just i picked like a random uh streaming app that i have and it was like one of the first things i'm like oh yeah i haven't seen that and i've been wanting to see it um i was really really impressed um i really liked i i Apparently, Bumblebee and this one are prequels to, like, the Bay Transformers movies. I guess. I don't know anymore. Which really depresses me because those movies are horrifying. I also think they're just their own thing at this point. I would like them to be. Why not? Just make them their own thing. I honestly think Bumblebee was like a reboot to all of it. That's what I thought. It's the way that I viewed it. That's what I thought that they kind of intended it to be. Because how many did they do? Five or six? They did five, yeah. And they were, like, the last three were apparently just awful. <sighs> yeah, I mean, all of them are pretty bad. <laughs> oh yeah, here's one thing. The I last liked about two, it. especially the Mark Wahlberg one, that I heard were just woof. Yeah, I, I here's the one the uh, the things that I liked about it. There's a lot of CGI in this movie, clearly, but they did it in such a way, and they used practical effects to you know put marks in the ground and whatnot yeah. to show you know skids and and things like that. They did enough practical stuff. That it made the CGI look good. It made it. It made it look better than than it maybe would have if they had done all CGI. Yeah. Like, hey, here's a CGI robot going through a CGI mountain. No, here's a CGI robot hitting a mountain that we yeah. wired to explode to look like you know. Uh, so I really like that. I like the two main characters, the two human characters, uh, Noah and uh, Elena. Um, I really liked those characters. Um, you know, I'm I'm a I'm a shithead from like the 1986, you know, Transformers. Yeah. You know, I'm I'm a I'm a Unicron groupie, man. Yeah. <laughs> and somebody told me that Unicron shows up in what the last one, the last night. No, the, he's I knew I don't the last yeah. Michael Bay movie. Apparently, he's uh, he's teased in the last one. Apparently. Yeah. And that's what you told me when you saw this movie. Is like, how can he be in this movie if he's teased in the very you know whatever. So that's why I think it's all just rebooted. I don't. I, don't, I have no. Fucking, I figure reboot. They the have whole been thing. super fucking vague about it anyway, so I don't know. One thing I like <laughs> is that um, all the all the voice acting is really good. I really like Pete Davidson as Mirage, um, Peter Dinklage as Scourge. I liked how because um, they have Cyclonus and Scourge and the sweeps. Okay, <clears throat> in the original cartoon movie, and Scourge was this one guy and they all looked like him and they were just a bunch of him and they were called the sweeps and those were his like dudes and then cyclonus was like one dude yeah i liked that they i wished they would have made a little bit more of an effort to make scourges scourges design more reminiscent of the original cartoon kind of just like a beard kind of thing yeah i fucking loved stratosphere yeah. That was cool as hell, right? And being able Dude, to see uh, that whole shot at the end when they're fighting and it looks like it, they it's all CG, right? Of but course. they make it look like it's a one shot of all the Transformers fighting each other. Like that was so fucking It's cool. all really the, good. Dude, the Optimus Primal, Optimus Prime one upping, it was like that was mine. You know, like that is like fucking yeah, that was that I was liked when they finally transformed. Rhinox, I think, was my favorite one because we didn't yeah. see nearly enough of him. But the Cheetah one was cool too. Like, oh, all, yeah, all they're all, all fucking cool. cool. Yeah. But seeing RC uh in uh live action. Yeah, yeah. Quote unquote. Yeah, yeah, because you it's not really there. Yeah. <laughs> What are you talking about? What do you mean? What do you mean? Uh, was really, really neat. Um, it's all good. I really, really liked it. I don't think I'm going <laughs> to see Bumblebee just because yeah. I don't need to. 
It's good. I well, I know, it. but I've already seen the sequel Haley to Steinfeld's it. Haley Steinfeld's really good at it. And John Cena, actually, is really good as a villain. Oh, wow. Because really, we're going to trust these guys? They're called Decepticons. <laughs> is, is Bumblebee the only Transformer in it? Yeah, but he's fighting like two other... He's like It's, it's actually a really more intimate movie, surprisingly enough. See, I'm not into that. Oh my God. I like the whole, you know, let's show the big CGI battle at the end. You're part of the fucking problem. Am I? You're killing I'm cinema. I'm the one who loves poor shit. things. <laughs> oh, Pay Love Job here with Jake and Tyler. 